And in this video, we're going to talk about the Pauli exclusion principle. Now, Pauli was a famous uh, scientist who understood the principles of the quantum numbers and how they associated to the assumed orbits and orbitals and energy levels of the electrons in orbits around the nucleus. So remember that we had four quantum numbers, the principal quantum number, the orbital quantum number, the magnetic quantum number, and the spin quantum number, each defining a certain aspect of the electron. The principal quantum number defined the energy level. So the principal quantum number defines the energy level where the electron resides in. The orbital quantum number uh, defines the angular momentum of the electron. The magnetic orbital quantum number defines the direction of the angular momentum of the electron. And finally, the spin quantum number defines the spin direction of the electron. What Pauli realized was when electrons are situated in the various energy levels and in the various shells and subshells and orbitals around the nucleus of an atom, that they can only reside there in a specific way and especially in such a way that no two electrons have the same quantum numbers. So of the four quantum numbers, each associated with some property electron, no two electrons in an, in an, in an orbit or around an atom can have the very same two quantum numbers in any situation. Since each orbital can only contain two electrons, and each electron either has a spin up or spin down, so Another way of looking at the Pauli exclusion principle is that you could only have a maximum of two electrons in each orbital and only if the two electrons had opposite spin. Another way kind of looking at the, the uh, Pauli exclusion principle. So as an example, let's say we'll start putting down electron configurations based upon the four quantum numbers. So let's say we talk, we talk about electron being in the first energy level, which necess necessitates it to have zero uh, angular momentum quantum number and zero magnetic quantum number and either a plus or a minus one half spin number. So let's say one electron has those four quantum numbers, then the other electron in the same energy level with the same angular momentum and the spin, same angular momentum direction would have to have an opposite spin direction. Now that represents the first s orbital in the first energy level. That one is now filled with two electrons and so any additional electrons added to the atom now has to reside in a different location because it cannot have the same principle of the same quantum numbers. So then the next electron would be in the second level, perhaps in the zero orbital level, which would be the s orbital, with a zero spin direction, or I should not say spin direction, but um, angular momentum direction, and maybe a plus one half spin direction. So that is the s orbital in the second energy level. There's room for a second electron, but that electron has to have a different set of quantum numbers. It can have the first three quantum numbers the same, second energy level, that would be in the s subshell, the s orbital, and that would be in the minus one half spin direction. So now we have the second orbital filled up. The next electron would have to have different quantum numbers. It could still be in the second energy level, but now you would have to be in the p subshell. That means it has a different uh, angular momentum. It could have a possibility of three directions, spin directions, so let's say call this one and call this plus one half. The next one would be have an energy of two. It may still be in the same, uh, well, if it's in the p orbitals, it would have the same angular momentum. Uh, perhaps same direction, but then it would have to have a different spin direction. So it have to have, if it has the same angular momentum and the same angular momentum direction, it would have to have a different spin direction in order to exist in the same orbital. Going on, we have again, same energy level, same p orbital shell, subshell, and then we have a different p orbital and a spin direction of plus one half. And if you have a second electron that exists in the same orbital, it would have a spin direction of a negative one half. Still in the same energy level, there's still a third p orbital, different spin direction, or I should say, not spin direction, but a different angle momentum direction, and then, of course, a spin direction like that. And if a second electron appears in the same orbital, it would have to have a different spin direction and so forth. So Pauli understood that electrons are situated around the nuclei of an atom in such a way that in no circumstance would an electron have the same properties of energy level, angle momentum, angle momentum direction, and spin direction all at the same time. And so therefore, Electrons are filling out those orbitals around the nucleus in such a way that they're neatly stacked 
with their own unique set of quantum numbers defining the properties of the electrons in those locations. Of course, the next one would be three. Third energy level, s orbital, zero for m sub l and then plus one half. And of course, we continue on like that again. Anytime you add another electron, different set of quantum numbers. And that's what we know and understand as Pauli's exclusion principle.